Hi, this is Charlie from Path of the Bee. In this video, I've decided to build a bee loader, similar to the easy loader style from Australia. So, my idea is just exactly that. I have no plans. I have gathered a few components that I want to put together. So, I'll kind of draw that out on the board and show you what I'm thinking. So unlike the Australian Easy Loader, I would like mine to be mounted on a trailer and not use all the fancy hydraulic leveling, but some mechanical stuff that I can pick up cheap and easy. So the, the concept is a trailer. The loader would be mounted here with a swivel of some sort attached here, an arm that would extend out, come back, and then the additional arm attached out here. And hook an ATV winch on the end. The cable would come down. It would have a typical fork mechanism. This would be uh, where our trailer ball hooks in. We'll probably need some guide for this main support, keep it stationary. And then the overhead view of this trailer would be, here's the tongue. Here's our tires. There would be an outrigger system that hooks on here. It will fold out. And on the end of this would be just a standard trailer jack. And then there would be one in each corner. So the distance of my pickup bed from this point here, where we could set a beehive on, back to here, actually here, then we have a ball pickup bed is seven feet eight inches. So taking that into consideration we'll have to determine how long this beam and this beam will be and the trailer for our reach. I want to be able to lift about 300 pounds out here. That's a huge amount of leverage on this. Um, it'll help. We don't want to tip the trailer, hence the outriggers. But also that's why I'm planning on extending this back a little bit. I'm going to put a box here. And we're going to put the batteries in it. To kind of help counterbalance some of this weight. And keep the machine from tipping. Right now, those are my, my ideas and concepts. Um, so I'll need a, a battery here, a wire that runs out, to the winch. The control on the winch will have to come down with the cable and hook into the, into the fork system. Let's look a little further at the actual components that I have and kind of get started on some more definite planning because right now I just I wish I had this so let's make a plan so this is the winch setup that I have I just got it out of the box uh, this is the mounting plate that they supply that would be mounted normally to a four-wheeler 
with, with mounting bolts here on the bottom. It's pretty thick material, 3 16 um, so we're going we're gonna to figure out how to attach that plate here to the end of the stick. This piece here, I, I'm planning on using for the, for the end stick. And then this will hook on there. We'll go ahead and put the fair lead guide in there, a little bolt on to keep the cable winding up correctly. This will be mounted in the direction where this will be facing down like that. You're not supposed to direct lift with these winches. Um, that's why I bought a, a substantially higher uh, pulling capacity one than, than what I thought I needed. Um, because I am going to be doing a direct lift with it. So I bought a 5,000 pound winch. We'll see how it works. It came with all of the controls and switches where this is the in out switch. We're going to have to figure out how to hook this into our, our, uh, our fork system and obviously the cord will run up to the winch. This piece here I intend to use for the, uh, for the main, main boom part. It's a part off of the old combine that I scrapped out and saved years ago. It, uh, I'm using round because of the, the rotational flexes on this one. This, say this is you know, bent here at its full 90 degrees and we have 300 pounds on the end of it, that's a lot of flex. On a regular piece like this, it, it'll twist and, and counteract our, our leveling system, cause a lot more work and stress on the piece. So therefore, I chose round, because round will, will resist that twisting force the most. Let's figure out how to attach this plate to the end of this stick. Okay, so I've looked over their mounting plate. The, the idea is to, these four holes here in the center, to bolt to your four-wheeler for the strength of the pull. So I think what I'm going to do is just grind the paint off of this and weld it directly to the end of, of, my, uh, of my stick there. We'll see how this will work out. Make sure I get my directions correct before I go ahead and do that. But that's the plan. Okay, so I've got the piece mounted in the vise here. I've got a flat disc on my, uh, my grinder. And we're going to clean this up. Okay, so I'm also going to put a bevel in the end here for the weld to seat good. I'll still use the flat disc to do that. I made the bevel about half the thickness of the, of the metal. That way I get good penetration and uh, nice strong bond. Okay, now I'm going to lay out the center of this here, uh, this direction, so I can have, get it welded nicely centered on my piece. I need a square to do that. I'll also do the same to the end of my stick here, make some marks at half the distance. Okay, because this stick is so long, I originally was going to stand it on here and, and weld it using the gravity to hold it in place, but I'm worried about it tipping over or hurting me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a spacer block on the floor to keep it up a little bit. And then I'm going to stand this on it where it needs to be, and I'm using a magnet to, to uh, attach the upright to my table to keep it stable and falling over. So then I'll end up welding it while it's basically on the floor. Okay, so here's my setup. I used a 90 degree magnet here, uh, stuck it to the table in there, messed around, I got 
everything lined up. It's ready to weld now, so I'll get my safety equipment on and we'll, uh, we'll weld it down. I'll probably just tack it there and then put it up on the table and finish it. Okay, so I'm going to use some 7018 rod here. Uh, arc welding with a DC positive at about 120 amps. I'm just going to tack it here while it's on the floor and then I'm going to get it up on the table so I'm not walling around on the concrete. Okay, I got up on the table. I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish welding this on. Okay, so I'm going to let that cool a little bit, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and mount the winch to the end of the stick. Okay, so I got the winch and the fair lead mounted up uh, to the stick, and uh, I'm getting ready to look at the wiring system here to figure out what's going on. I noticed that it has a circuit breaker in it with absolutely no way to insulate it. So this is supposed to be a hot wire. You hook this hot wire to that this is all exposed if it contacts the stick which will be ground we'll short stuff out and burn our battery up and cause problems so we're going to have to do some fabricating here and uh, come up with a with an idea how to keep the stuff that needs to be insulated insulated and uh, the stuff that yeah like look at this so this is the this is the actual switch now normally this is like mounted somewhere on a four-wheeler to keep it out of the weather obviously I don't have that out here and uh, so I'm gonna have to modify some stuff a little bit and maybe build a little protective box here that I can mount stuff in and keep it all safe okay so what I've decided to do is here we have our circuit breaker this is important to include um, but there's it's going to be difficult to find some way to like hook that in and keep it insulated from all the metal exposure. So what I've decided to do is when I build the other end that hooks up to the battery terminal, I'm just going to hook this straight solid to the battery terminal and so this will end up being in the battery box and we can have it insulated and safe there. These other components, I did go ahead and hook these uh, two wires up, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to build I'm going to build a box, just a small box that fits right back here uh, that I can work in, have a lid that goes over the top of it, it will keep the weather out. This will obviously be outside and exposed to the weather at all times, and so I'm going to protect this little uh, electrical contraption here from the weather. Um, and so then I'll wrap my wires back up and, and drop down with, with my control lever. I think I'll have it set up to where I can disengage this and put it away safe um, when I'm not using the machine to keep the sun and the rain off of the control switch. So that'll be the next thing that I do is, is build a little box to put, to put this in. Okay, so that's going to be it for this video segment. I'm going to keep making installments of my basic daily progress on this project. Like I said, I don't have any plans. I'm just kind of putting it together as I go and thinking about it. If I work a little bit every day, I can think about the troubles or problems I may have with the, with the next setup. So I'm going to kind of work from here and go back toward the trailer as I go. So, so tomorrow what I'll work on is the little box for the control and then hooking the stick to the main boom and uh, we'll go from there. If you have any questions or comments, they're greatly appreciated. Uh, thanks for watching.